Welcome back to the garage. This is about the, all the videos I'm going to be able to get here for the next uh, month or so as the winter has set in and kept us off the roads. Hopefully within the next month or so we'll be able to get one of these bikes out. Might not be the Indian, but uh, we'll probably be able to get the KLR out. Uh, they keep throwing salt on the roads and I'm going to keep the Indian inside till all the salt's gone. Anyway, I had a subject that uh, I wanted to kind of cover with you guys and see uh, what you thought about it. A few years ago, uh, I went camping. I wanted to go up to one of my favorite fishing spots and uh, took the motorcycle up there because it uh, lets me get into some of those back out of the way places a little easier than it would be driving a car or a truck back in there and uh, do some fishing. So I went up to one of the Forest Service campgrounds and I come pulling into the campground and the campground host comes walking out and he goes, uh, we don't allow motorcycles in here. And uh, you know, I've been camping at these Forest Service campgrounds for 30 plus years and I know that they allow motorcycles in there as long as they're street legal. They want to keep uh, people from bringing their kids in and riding the dirt bikes around all day in the campgrounds and that, but uh, it says right on their signs that uh, you know, street legal motorcycles are exempt from being barred from the campgrounds. And riding the KLR, it was a street legal bike. I had my uh, camping gear and stuff on there and I just wanted to go in there and uh, pay my 12 bucks or whatever it was and set my tent up and have a nice picnic table or I could do some cooking and, and just kind of kick back and uh, enjoy the outside and do some fishing. Anyway, so he you know, he's, he was pretty adamant not, about not letting me camp there. And I, got, I was talking to him, and I didn't want to, like, walk over to the sign and point to it and show him where, you know, hey, it says right here, street legal motorcycles. I got a license plate on the back of this thing, so I'm allowed to camp here whether you say so or not. But, uh, so, you know, I didn't want to have a confrontation with the guy, so I just sat there and kind of talked to him for a little bit and told him I wouldn't be any trouble. I just set my tent up, and then... Uh, you know, head out and do some fishing and then come back and, you know, cook dinner or whatever and go to bed. And uh, as soon as I met, mentioned fishing, he kind of perked up and says, oh, you're here to fish? And I said, yeah, I'm just going to come up here. We're going to do some camping and, you know, the motorcycle makes it easier for me to go fishing. So uh, he goes, oh, yeah, where are you going to fish? And I told him a couple of the creeks I was going to hit and... And, uh, you know, then he asked about what kind of gear I wanted to use or was going to use and uh, so forth. And then he goes, well, I guess I can let you camp here as long as you just camp in back. There's, a, there's some spots back there I think would be good for you. And, you know, this campground had 20, 25 spots. And uh, I'm like, all right, whatever, I'll just go camp in the back. It's all right. I like it back away from everybody in, anyway. You know, and then so I rode around the campground, and there's only like five people in there, so it wasn't like the place was jammed full, and I was going to be just disturbing a whole bunch of people by riding through the park, and, you know, my KLR's got stock exhaust on it, so it's not uh, a loud motorcycle by any means. But anyway, so I went and set up my camp, and went out to go do some fishing, and the thunderstorm drove me back to camp. It was kind of nasty out, so I decided I'd go back and just knowing that it was going to blow over, I'd just go uh, climb back in the tent, take a nap, and then go back out for an evening fish. And uh, so that's what we did, or that's what I did, I should say. And uh, came back into camp, and it cleared up, and he's making his rounds around camp. Well, how was the fishing? You know, and that's all he ever wanted to talk about was the fishing. And after that, he was like my best friend. So anyway, I was just wondering if you guys have run into situations like that where people have kind of came on to you strong and, you know, didn't like, uh, like that you rode motorcycles and, and, uh, you know, and I was just wondering how you treated it. Uh, did you, did you try to talk to the guy and, you know, prove to him that you weren't a bad guy or, uh, did you just figure he wasn't worth the time and just ride away? But, uh, anyway, I would just like to, uh, ask you guys in the comments below, uh, put down your experiences, good or bad of, uh, people that uh, you've come across when you're riding your motorcycle. I do thank you for uh, 
watching the video today. If you kind of like the garage talk videos, uh, throw those, throw that comment in the uh, comments below, and we'll uh, and maybe some uh, subjects that you might want to talk about or or whatever. You know, we're uh, I'm just here just to have a good time and uh, share my thoughts with my friends that I've made on uh, YouTube and. And uh, I, I appreciate all you guys for uh, watching the videos. And and, uh, and if this is your first time on the channel and you like the video, uh, please give it a thumbs up and uh, subscribe. And I'll uh, link some other videos down here on the video and in the, into the video here so you can see some of our rides and some of the other adventures that uh, we have around uh, Idaho here. And I. Uh, Thank you for coming along, and for you guys that are in the warmer climates, uh, ride safe and take care, and thanks for watching.